Welcome to part two of developing classification models for content management, in which we will be looking more closely at how to develop taxonomy. Hello again. I'm David Shaw, your instructor for the second part of classification models for content management. For more than 10 years, I've been developing metadata models and designing and developing solutions for component content management and learning content management systems. In this second part, we will explore what makes a good taxonomy and how to approach the development of your taxonomy. Finally, we will consider criteria for build or buy decisions. In part one, we discover the difference between taxonomy and metadata. Taxonomy is a hierarchical classification of things in which a content object can only be placed in one node. Metadata, in contrast, is a flat model of information associated with the content, sometimes externally and sometimes internally. A title, for example, is internal metadata, and a good content management system will extract this rather than requiring you to key it into a form. We also discussed how a metadata field can incorporate a taxonomy. Finally, in part one, we discuss the need to classify information to manage our always growing body of knowledge. This body of knowledge represents our experience and expertise. Having access to it efficiently increases the effectiveness of our organization. Classifying information tells us what it is. For example, is it a financial report or a project proposal? Is it a standard template? Because a taxonomy is hierarchical, we can aggregate like or related information. When information is classified, we can use this meta information to search for buckets of content. As we apply more classification to information, for example, the author, we can use this as a filter to refine our search and restrict the number of documents that we find. If you need it, there is more information on this in part one. There are some things you should know about the process of developing a taxonomy. Laura Ramos of the Giga Information Group has said that creating a taxonomy is a process that is not easily reproduced across organizations. Each project will be unique and require strategic corporate vision and executive backing. When developing a taxonomy, planners must recognize that users will want to access information both by subject and its contents. To be successful, taxonomies must be able to account for the fact that humans understand contents at both a macro and micro level. The ARC group says that many taxonomies begin as back of the envelope exercises or use simple mind mapping tools. Precise methodologies do not exist, so building a taxonomy is still largely an art form. Boxes and Arrows also says that most corporate taxonomy development projects begin at the wrong end of the information life cycle. Instead of tackling the problem at its source, content creation, the effort is invested in classifying documents in an existing repository with all its warts. The result is classified mush. Many organizations are drowning in files because they try to use the shared network as a quasi-content management system. You can quickly find out if this is the case by asking if they have a file naming convention. A file naming convention embeds metadata in the file name so you know what it is. If they have a file naming convention, they don't have a content management system. Or maybe they do have a content management system and they still keep the file naming convention. This is very bad practice. Very bad. Here is a real world example of a file naming convention. This is making people do the work that should be done by a content management system. This document map shows how many organizations try to manage content on a shared network. It's a real world example, so I won't explain all the details. As discussed a moment ago, there's a file naming convention and maybe, just maybe, people are asked to enter keywords in the Windows property dialog. Documents will have metadata like title embedded in the cover page. 
This is normal and standard practice. The shared drive will have some kind of ad hoc taxonomy, probably one for every branch, department and project. Nobody will be in charge of keeping it clean. Many documents will be copied to many different nodes. With a bit of luck, the shared drive will have a search engine that can search on full text and the keyword properties separately or in combination with the full text. What we need is a proper classification model in a document or content management system. The process for developing a taxonomy is straightforward. First, assemble a team of stakeholders, subject matter experts, and end users or customers. This is also a good time to form the governance process, an oversight committee that will maintain the model through change requests and a change log or history. Define the scope of the project so it's manageable and can deliver results in a reasonable period, and establish the evaluation criteria for success. Research the situation. Do an audit to uncover needs and research industry and corporate standards. Develop, test and revise the model until it works well and has scope for growth in the future. When the team is in place and the scope has been defined, the main plan is to do an audit to inventory source content and identify the target products or uses. There will be a gap between the classification required for the source and its targets. Identifying and understanding this gap will give the insight necessary to develop an approach to the taxonomy and subsequently a metadata model. To determine our approach, we need to define the business problem we are trying to solve and answer the questions, what content is relevant to this problem and what information do we need about that content? This will help us make the decision to build or buy the taxonomy. As we think through the approach, we should consider how we will maintain the taxonomy and what standards are relevant. As we further develop our understanding, we should start to think about how we will store and use the content and taxonomy. Ultimately, the storage system will have a big impact on the usability and effectiveness of the taxonomy. The taxonomy should also be extensible to meet the needs of new opportunities as they emerge. There are several best practices for developing a taxonomy. The strategy should start with a statement of goals and purpose. Pick the objectives a taxonomy will support and limit the scope. Limit domains, the users, and the strategies. Do an environmental scan and inventory to identify and document the target audiences, contributors, stakeholders, content sources, content volume, overall objectives and related strategies. Do a needs analysis based on business objectives. A needs analysis focuses on the requirements related to the goals, aspirations, and needs of the users and or the user community, and feeds them into the taxonomy analysis process. The main purpose of a needs analysis is the user's satisfaction. The output of this should be a statement of scope and objectives to establish a framework for the development of the taxonomy. Once the business need is understood, a build or buy decision can be made based on criteria such as these. Does a standard already exist? Can we use it as is? Can we adapt it at low cost? Or should we develop our own? Every case is different, but in general a standard should be used as is. Some users are probably already familiar with the standard and changing it in any way will sow confusion. Maintenance of an adapted version may be difficult and expensive if the standard changes. If the adaptation is extensive, the effort involved may be as much or more than developing a purpose-built taxonomy. Well, here we are at the end of part two on developing a taxonomy. There is one more module on taxonomy and then we will be ready for developing metadata. If you have any feedback or questions, please send me an email.